Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Well, now it's time to discuss the bill to allow FRSC officers bear arms. Well, there's a skilled second reading. A bill to amend the Federal Road Safety Commission FRSC Act 2007, allowing officers to bear arms and establish a road safety special arms squad, has passed its second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill aims to empower the FRSC to regulate traffic, supervise road users, clear obstructions, and educate the public on road safety while addressing traffic administration and safety management. The House also urged FRSC to adopt technology-assisted enforcement methods like automated traffic enforcement ATE systems, expressing concerns about risk posed by current enforcement practices such as physical checkpoints and high-speed chases. Now joining us to discuss this is Samson Ajibadi, is a security expert, and also James Ebor is a legal practitioner. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Hi, Samson. I know you're on the phone with us. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Samson. Okay, so we're talking, um, you know, a bill for FRSC um, to be able to carry arms. I mean, these are people who are supposed to help with the road safety. That's their job. But, but now that they have to carry arms, I want to ask you, James, um, what do you think has prompted the introduction of this? Let's just understand the reason behind this, the reason why, um, you know, this agency is deciding or now, um, you know, there's a bill that has scaled through second reading to allow them carry arms on the road. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, when I saw the, the news about um, the proposed amendment mm. to allow us of the court to bear arms, um, I, I was scared because this will not be the first time they are attempting to be empowered to bear arms. Mm. And um, it's scary. Uh, mm. Because if um, the law clearly empowers them to administer and make our road safe and not to chase arm robbers. Um, as uh, you all know, traffic offenses are not uh, natural offenses. In fact, there's a Latin maxim that says they are offenses mala prohibita. They are only criminal offenses because they are prohibited by law. Mm. Other than that, they are not offenses. So I think the emphasis should be automating the system and ensure that uh, uh, road violations or violators of um, traffic rules are apprehended in a more professional way using technology than begin to give arms to members of the corps to begin to chase violators about with guns. And you know what already the police and other arm bearing agencies are already doing, mm -hmm. violating people's fundamental rights. So this will just be the height of it. I think that bill should not be allowed to pass through the third reading or even to go beyond the committee stage where it is actually lying now. Um, yes, I agree with um, <clears throat> other amendments that has to do with automation and um, uh, also improving their welfare, but certainly not allowing them to bear arms. Road safety should, <clears throat> or the government should be investing more in um, traffic regulations, make, making sure that in, uh, in all the urban cities, traffic lights are functional. There should be cameras tracking those over speeding and those violating traffic rules. And, um, you know, because of the digital nature of um, the driver's license and even the number plate, they can use technology to track mm. um, those drivers and those vehicles. And when they come for license renewal, um, driver's license re renewals, re renewal of their um, car papers, mm. where they have been sent with notices to pay fines or to appear before a traffic court and they fail. You don't renew their licenses. You don't renew their vehicle licenses. And before they do that, they are made to undergo some kind of training and pay some kind of fines. You don't. They don't need arms. They certainly don't need arms. Mm.
Okay, so um, Samson, would you deem this necessary um, for FRC to be able to bear arms? Because I want to believe that uh, the police have their own responsibility. And with the FRC, they're supposed to work in tandem with them, whereby even if anything happens, they can just hand over any criminal or any suspect to the police. So is it necessary for them to also now have oversight functions just as the police in Nigeria? Okay, thank you so much. I hope I'm uh, much clearer now. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, so I've always emphasized, I've always said that uh, uh, the law is the law. We may not like it, but it remains the law. Mm. The only way we could change is to call for an amendment or to ensure that the citizens are enlightened or are conscious. Now, when I, when I saw the headline, I was like, whoa. If you begin to call for the FRSC to be armed, it's like calling on the, the Lagos State Government to arm LASMA. Mm. Isn't that ridiculous? When we have arms in the hands of underpaid uh, policemen and other uniformed agencies, we have still not forgotten what we, the experience we had in 2020 during the NSAS protests. We have a lot of agencies, we have a lot of agencies carrying arms. Should we now add the FRSC to the list again? When their basic function, the basic function of the FRSC is sociological. It is to educate, it is to control traffic, it is to license, it is to investigate and license uh, uh, schools, driving schools, and their functions are basically sociological they are not to get involved in in crime at all or in crime control at all however going through uh, the the act establishing the the commission i read through section 19 and i saw that there is a provision there is a provision for them to to carry arms mm. it is called the special power of the members of the court. That was the reason I said it like that. We may not like the law. Mm. But when this law was made in the first place, where we are Nigerians, where we are agitators, where we are the conscious people, we never follow through. The reason we wouldn't even look at the, the content of, of some of our laws or bills or even acts. Let me read uh, section uh, 19. For the purpose of carrying out or enforcing the provisions of this act, such member of the court as may be determined by the commission, exposed to high risk in the enforcement of the provisions of this act, shall have the same powers, authorities, and privileges, including power to bear arms, as are given by law to members of the Nigerian police. This is it. It is there already. But we need to begin to ask ourselves, is, is this what we need right now? FR, the FRSC is not a crime control agency. Mm. Like the Leonard Council said the other, the other time, it is just to control uh, little, little, little offenses. That is all. So all we need here is for us to let, to allow ethics and logic to prevail over sentiments. And what am I saying here? Is that let the FRSC focus on its basic responsibilities. They should also, they, the FRSC should also pro provide ambulance services. How many FRSC stations have ambulance services? When an FRSC officer would have to stand in front of a trailer, of a truck, of any busy vehicles to stop them, is that what we want in a modern, in a contemporary society? So the carrying of arms should not even be a, a, major, a major issue here. We have the police. The police also has a, a, a department, the traffic department. Even the, the traffic department in the police wouldn't even carry arms. Mm. Why now saying the FRSC should carry arms when we should be calling for the digitalization of the FRSC? Mm. But the law is the law. There is a provision for it. But we need to also ask ourselves, this, uh, this commission was set up in 1988 by a military, by a military government, Babangida, and he didn't set them up to carry arms. 
He didn't establish them to carry arms. That tells you that even the some of our the, some of our military rulers were much more logical than our present leaders. If the military could not give arms because there is a provision for it to the FRSC, then why should we now begin to call on the federal government mm. to arm the FRSC where we have a lot of arms in the hands of underpaid and ill-treated workers? Mm. Well, okay, so. I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I think because one question you asked was, where were Nigerians when the, when the provision was even made? And so that talks about public mm -hmm. perception. I'm sure people definitely will have concerns. I personally, you know, would have concerns um, regarding abuse of it, because you see cases, even with our police um, officers, you even see some trigger-happy officers because they have, um, you know, mm -hmm. firearm, a firearm with them, and now, if the FRSC is also going to be able to car carry one, um, I'm sure people are going to even have certain fears. And now, um, to James, how do you think the government, if this, you know, possibly passes through the third reading and it turns, you know, into law, how do you think the government can ensure the safety of Nigerians, maybe regulate whatever it is, even if they carry the firearms? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. I, I think, um, like um, uh, Samson clearly said, we've not been able to effectively regulate the way the Nigerian Army personnel, mm. the Nigerian members of the Nigerian Police Force, and other services like uh, NSCDC, even bear arms. Their training is poor, they are poorly remunerated, and then we are adding um, federal safety uh, combat, <laughs> you know, I mean, the um i think uh, we should rise up to ensure that the um, the provisions on uh, allowing them to bear arms is uh, taken out yeah. and rather we should tinker with the provisions to automate their system and make it make it make them more efficient in, our, in making our roads safe like i said um, there is this relationship they have with um, the Nigerian police force. So you see them mount their roadblocks either before or after the police checkpoints. You know, so that has to be strengthened. They don't need to bear arms if they feel their personnel are usually attacked uh, by uh, maybe armed robbers or those who want to avoid traffic. You don't need to. Um, expose yourself to danger as a core member to stop any traffic mm -hmm. offender. So what they are trying to tell us is that if I try to beat uh, their roadblock, they will fire at me. The mm -hmm. crime I committed mm -hmm. is not a felony that will mm -hmm. warrant you attacking me with uh, an assault rifle. Mm -hmm. So they should rather, you know, begin to devise means of what, what, let's even sometimes borrow from Europe. How do they enforce uh, traffic offenses? Do they carry guns around? The answer is no. Uh, the system fitted in traffic um, uh, lights or in major junctions are cameras that can trail a road user or a driver to his destination. By the cameras can detect who the driver is and bring out your, your entire data. It will know where even the kind of license you're, you're using and deliver an information or a summons to you in your house mm. or the system we should try you know to implement mm. not giving their arms and um, creating more problems in our society mm. I quite agree with you because I know in the UK um, you definitely get a fine if you know if something like that should happen and you get it you know at and your door fine. Yes, and the fines are not small money. Yes. The fines are not small money. Yes, you're you know? looking at 70 pounds so, and all. And you get it, it's even delivered straight to your letterbox. So I think, honestly, we need to definitely look at those automated systems. Um, we have cameras. We, In fact, we have a lot of traffic lights that the cameras are not working. So how better can you do your job? And those are things we need to be looking at, not just saying, yes, we want to be able to have you carry firearms on the road. But Samson, you are a security expert. I want to believe that there should be a national security framework for Nigeria.
Um, how do you think this aligns with that? Do you think FRSC carrying firearms um, aligns with our own broader framework for national security? Hello, Samson. Hello, Samson. Can you hear me? Okay, I think we lost Samson. Can you hear me? Okay, please. Did you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay. Please go ahead. How okay, do you now, think this works with our framework for national security? Even in the framework, in the security architecture, each agency has its functions. Right. The framework, the set up, the architecture of the FRSC is not built on arms. Mm. Because there are agencies, there are arms carrying agencies that even have a, a traffic departments. The police ask the traffic departments and they don't even carry arms. Look at vigilante. Look at vigilante groups. Mm. Some of these vigilante, they even misuse the arms they carry. Mm -hmm. Why now call on the agency to begin to carry arms? When we should begin to look for or agitate for the implementation or for the training of our men so that they would have that prosecutorial skills. How many FRSC officers have prosecutorial skills? We say, okay, when, when, uh, when they are arrested, when traffic offenders are arrested, times they are even given, they are taken to, uh, handed over to, to the police because... They have the prosecutorial power, but many of these officers are not trained. They do not even know how to go about it when they, when they go to the court. So this is what this is one of the things we should be doing. We should be calling on the federal government to do, not for them to carry arms. That should that should not even be in our in our in our something at all. I'm not afraid of this of this uh, bill sailing through. Why? Because I know that for every law implemented, we can always call for an amendment and some part of, of it can be expunged. So if this is implemented and Nigerians are not comfortable with it, if we all speak together, I am very sure that it could be expunged. Though this could be, it could be difficult, but I tell you, it could be expunged. But this is a wake up call for Nigerians to always to be conscious, to remain conscious and know everything happening. But the FRSC structure, it is a traffic offense, it is a traffic body. They are to uh, perform sociological functions. They are to relate with people casually, sociologically, not seeing themselves as a, as a crime control agency. No. Mm. So the framework we have in Nigeria has stipulated functions for each of the agencies of government. So therefore, the FRSC, even if they have it in their act, that part should be expunged. That is it. Mm. All right. Um, I want to come to you, James. Now, we understand that, you know, uh, this is law enforcement, and I'm sure there are going to be implications for it. If something like this should scale through, um, pass through the third reading, become law, do you think some other agencies, some other law enforcement agencies might start to push for this as well and say, you know, if the FRSC can carry firearms, I should be able to as well? Um, um, yes, I, I think um, maybe what one has to do is uh, to check what the bill actually talks about. Because mm. I just confirmed now, uh, I just checked the Road Safety Commission Act 2007, mm. which was an amendment of the 1990 Commission Act. And mm. I can confirm that Section 19 actually empowers them to be an arm. Mm. But maybe uh, they are looking for more powers. Um, uh, which uh, I don't understand. But like I said, we should not allow that. We should rather be thinking about um, amending the provisions of Section 19 that already empower them to bear arms. Like you said, maybe more agencies will want to bear arms. Who are those agencies? Almost all the security agencies bear arms, <clears throat> from the Nigerian police <clears throat> to NSCDC to uh, the Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and EFCC. They, um, they all bear EFCC carry arms. EFCC, mm. most of the personnel that carry arms are seconded from the Nigerian police force. Mm -hmm. I think, I think um, uh, it will be dissipating a lot of uh, uh, legislative energy 
uh, and uh, exposing the public or traffic users to more danger. Mm. The road safety should concern itself more in enforcing the powers they already have in collaboration with members of the Nigerian police force. And like uh, Samson also emphasized, uh, they just need to improve their prosecutorial uh, 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 skills and working with the judiciary. In almost all the states, they set up mobile courts. And they've been doing well. They've been doing well. They just need to step up. Mm. And with the support of the courts, um, they just need to step up. Like I said, the way to go is automation, is using digital uh, te is technology, to ensure that we make our roads safe. Mm. I mean, that is that is even the that's the key thing that we want. I mean, and that is even what they were set up for in the first place, making sure that the roads are safe. But now, if this happens, what kind of training do we think we want to see from them? And you know, some form of transparency and accountability from not just even the FRSC, the government as well, to ensure that people are not just being you know if I commit a traffic offense, I might just be gone down. What, what kind of training and transparency like in, like do you in need Abuja. to see? Like in Abuja, that is the center, uh, the capital of Nigeria, mm. and we pride ourselves as the giant of Africa. Right. And uh, one of the things the safety commission members are supposed to do is not to allow animals walking to our uh, highways and obstructing okay. traffic. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you drive around Abuja, there is no automated traffic regulation um, uh, cameras. They are not mm. there. Everything is done manually. In the 21st century, it is actually sad. Uh, sometimes I begin to wonder what um, what the government really want to do. Is it that they are confused or you don't just want to mm -hmm. do? You know, these cameras have to, you know, improve our security because people don't like to come commit crimes where they are captured by cameras. And right. it's sad that even in the 21st century, the kind of resources we have we do not have security cameras or traffic cameras anywhere in this country. That is very unfortunate. And this should be what the National Assembly sh should be oversighting the responsible agencies to do, not just amending laws that will never be implemented. And when they are implemented, implemented they are implemented against the people. Mm. Right. Okay. Um, finally, Samson, I want to get your, um, what's the way forward? What do you think needs to happen now? Um, how do we go about this? And even if it happens, what do you expect to see? How do we, how do we go about it? Yes. There's, one, there's something called crime, crime control through environmental design. If the federal government or if the lawmaker feels uh, uh, the FRSC is a crime control agency, then you need to make sure the environment is safe. Look at our roads. Make sure all the roads are repaired, all the roads are, are, are in good condition. Then crime would even reduce. You cannot give arms to that officer or to those officers who will stay at a point under the sun for hours. They will misbehave psychologically. It will affect their emotions. Mm -hmm. It will affect their, their psychology. So they will misbehave. The reason I am saying that even if there is a part of the of their heart of the heart that stipulate that they could be harmed, that should be expunged, expunged or amended. And if this uh, if this sales true, sales true, it tells you that tomorrow, man, or peace call, they could even wake up tomorrow and mm -hmm. say they want to start bearing arms. I did a report on on a, on a, this uh, vigilante group in you know, in State. You need to see the way these these guys. These guys who are just vigilante, you need to you need to see the way they harass community youths. They go after Yahoo guys, vigilante groups. So that tells you that if you are giving arm, giving arms to the FRSC, it's like you are militarizing them, mm -hmm. and we should not even call for the militarization of any of our law enforcement agencies. So that is it. All right, thank the you. Road should be repaired. You are coming automate the system and this law this bill should not seal through that's my take all right thank you so much thank you gentlemen for coming it was a pleasure having you thank you for your time
All right, so we're speaking with Samson Ajibadi, he's a security expert, and James Ebo is a legal practitioner. And we've just been talking about the bill to allow FRSC officers bear arms, and that has scaled through second reading. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about International Day of the Girl Child, and this says Girls' Vision for the Future. Please stay, stay with us.